We are back. Welcome to Recommended Daily Dose. I am your host, Dr. Clinton Coleman, along with my slugger of a colleague. I, I thought we'd say esteemed colleague. Esteemed co- colleague. How you doing today? What's your name? Introduce yourself. Dr. Seward Sugger, infectious disease physician and co-host with Dr. Clinton Coleman. And we have a very special guest today. You're listening to Recommended Daily Dose with Drs. Clinton Coleman and Serge Sugger. The not so average health show with a unique spin on what's making headlines in healthcare. Soon to be Dr. Kamali Thompson, right? So she's a fourth year medical student who has a dual degree. I only had one degree, so. She's, she's gonna a, put us to shame, that's right. right. So she's an MD, MBA at Robert Wood Johnson. That's in New Brunswick. If that wasn't enough, what else she got going on? I'm gonna spare time. She's training for the Olympics in oh, 2020. Wow. And fencing. Right. So welcome to the show here. Thank Molly. you. Thanks for and having you're me. From Teaneck, right? Yeah, from Teaneck, right. so from like two blocks away. When I was growing up, you know, I only had two two choices: getting out of the hood. So one get, was get out of the hood of West Orange. Okay, tell yeah, us. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was rapping or you know going to the league, playing basketball, bowling. Or what, what kind of league? Bowling, no, golf, I, golf. NBA. You, 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 you can, I've you seen you play basketball, and you can barely. You know, I know they say. But you, on the other hand, <laughs> how'd you get involved in fencing? Tell us a little background. So um, when I was getting ready to go to high school, I was a dancer. Okay. So I was going to the Teaneck High School open house with my mom in eighth grade. We were like running to the dance room. And on the way there, we saw this demonstration of uh, the fencing team in the high school in the cafeteria. So my mom stuck her head in and she's like, oh my God, what's this? And I said, who cares? The dance room is this way, like, mm. let's go. And had you ever seen fencing before? No, never saw it. It looked wow. very odd if you ask. I mean, most people think it looks weird. It looked weird to me too. Um, so she talked to the coach for about 10, 15 minutes. Little did we know that the coach, her daughter, um, fenced at Princeton University and then later went on to become a Olympic medalist in the 2012 Olympics. So anyway, she convinced my mom that I should fence because dancing, very similar footwork, right. um, very good, very easy, or not easy, but there's a chance of you getting a scholarship to college, going to an Ivy League school. Right. So my mom heard that and she's like, okay, well, that's it, you're fencing next year. Also, a couple questions though, because I you bring up a great point. So. I have several friends who tell me their kids are fencing. I never mm-hmm. knew it was a, a big thing. So one is, I feel like a lot of them will say, well, this is a good chance for my kid to shine on the college applications. Yep. Is that it? So that's actually that's, in that's, the back of a lot of people's minds? Yeah, that's, that's really true. So actually, mm. um, the NCAA came out with a list of sports where you have the best chance of getting a scholarship, and fencing's number one. Oh, wow. So your kid has a 30% chance of getting a scholarship. Is that, So th- is that just based on the... Uh, I mean, I'm sure it's growing popularity. Was it just based on what? Just that there's more kids doing other more the, traditional sports? Um, it's a, like the probability, like right. how many people are in the sport sure, compared sure, to sure. what's out there. Right. So for fencing, I think there's like mm, maybe 20,000 high school students that are fencing. Right. Whereas there's a million basketball players. Right. And like the number of scholarships just aren't there. That's actually what happened to Dr. Coleman. He's a victim of those stats. Oh. A victim of the, yeah. Victim of, yeah, is that? Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> but what kind of skills? Uh, you mentioned like dance skills, but I always envision someone tall with a long reach that has natural ability. What's, like, what do they look for? So um, fencing's really cool because it's this mixture of strategy and athleticism. So you, if you're really athletic, that helps because you have to move up and down the strip a lot. Um, there's a lot of lunging, a lot of fast movement. But like I said, there's a lot of strategy involved. So if you don't what, think What at kind all, of strip are we talking about? You, that's what you call the The fencing area. strip, yes. Ah, okay, right. Not yes. the Vegas strip. Not, Not the, Vegas the Vegas strip. strip. Oh, all right. But for someone who has no athletic ability like Dr. Sugger, Hello. can you explain Hello. what like fencing like yeah. like the sport of it. Yep. So I've always been more brains than, you know. That's great. So yeah. you less brawn, right? So basically um so there's three weapons, epic, foil and saber. Hmm. They all have a different method of um, winning the touches and what I what I mean by that is right. they have different target area. So epe is your whole body. It's insane. Okay. Um foil is just a torso. Right. It's the same weapon that was in the pan trap if you saw that. And saber is the waist up and it's like a slashy kind of Pirates of the Caribbean Zorro. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. Kind of yeah. So uh, Saber is the fastest. That's what I do. Epe is m- more like um, draw someone in that hit them on the toe kind of a weapon. And then foils like right in the middle. So okay, right. whatever like speed you'd be best at is kind of where you would go. So Epe, because it's the whole body, a lot of tall people fence Epe. Oh, I see. You know, so like someone little like me, I'm not little, but I'm 5'6". So it'd be hard for me to fence someone who's like 6'3", right. you know, because I like lunge to hit them and their hands are either. But I had no idea there was actually three different, yep. uh, like almost like categories mm-hmm. to play against. So the Olympics, there's three different. Yep, there's okay. three different ones. 
And when you hit someone, I mean, is it uh, electronically recorded? Yes. So what happens is you have this body, we call it a body cord, a body cord that connects to your weapon. Right. Uh, and then the other end, it connects to a box. And those boxes are connect, connected to lights. So if I hit you, my light goes off. If you hit me, mm. your light goes off. And then you have referee. So the referee decides whose touch it is based on the rules of fencing. Right. Is there ever a draw where both people hit each other at the same time? Yeah, so that's Epe. So if you ever want to watch fencing, you should watch Epe because it's the easiest to understand. Right. There's no rules. I hit you, you hit me. We get both hit at the same time and we both get a touch. Um, except for it's, if it's the last touch of the bout. So bouts end at 15, so if it's 14, 14, right. then one of us have to get one light. But other than that... I feel like that's not like my brother and I are playing in the basement when we're little. You know, Probably. Like, yeah, <laughs> you don't smack baseball. each other that, in the that's face. Right, yep. That's right, that's mm-hmm. right. But how's that explain? How'd you get so good at it? Like... You started from high school. Like yeah. I've been, is that I've been doing golf for four years and I still stink at it. Like you must have had some kind of Well again, remember she has baseline athletic ability. I which do. you're lacking here, right? And so that's mm. true. <laughs> so <laughs> But what's the typical age? But to to lead to you know, being in the Olympics is a whole, totally different level of innate athletic ability, wouldn't you say? I think so. Yeah. So mom like she was she had some foresight. She right? did. She knew. <laughs> um and the really cool part about that is so let me answer your question first, and I'll tell you the cool part about yeah. my mom. So um, for me, I think naturally I'm just really fast. A lot of people say I should have run track, but I hate running, so that was just not an option. Me too. So how did I get so good? I didn't like people hitting me, and obviously that's the point of fencing, right? right? They're, like, coming for you. So mm. um, I would just get out the way, and then I would just run and hit them. And my coach is like, wow, you're actually really good. Uh, this is really good talent. You should get better. Uh, but once again, I was focused on dance. I didn't care. I didn't want right. to do it. Um, my sophomore year of high school, we had a really big competition called Freshman Sophomore. All the freshmen and sophomore in New Jersey uh, fenced into one competition. And mm. I came in ninth, and I was upset. I was so upset because um, obviously I wanted to win. So I went to her and I said, well, how do I get better? And she told me that there was a fencing club in New York City called the Peter Westbrook Foundation. And what that club was, was there was an African-American male who was a six-time Olympian, and he mm. made this club for minorities in the area where they could learn the sport of fencing. That's so, great. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, six-time Olympian is just ridiculous. Incredible. So and this was in Manhattan, so the, the people come all boroughs, tri-state. All boroughs. Yeah. Um, usually, like, some New Jersey, Connecticut people. Sure. Every once in a while, like, Virginia or something wild like that. Uh, so I walk in this club, and there are all these super cool, super fly fencers, and they are my age or above, like college age, but not only are they really good, but they're national team members, mm. world champions, Olympians, and they all go to like Columbia University, NYU. So I was like, well, how do I get to be on their <laughs> so there you go. And then that's where wow. it took off. So then what? Then you went from what, once a week to twice a week to every day type of training? Yeah, so I started once a week on Saturdays, and then my uh, the owner, Peter Westberg, told me that if I wanted to be on their level, I have to fence five days a week, which was nuts because I'm from Teaneck. So right. So are you going to Manhattan five days a week? Yeah, well, I was, and I didn't plan on it. Yeah. How did mom feel about this? She was yeah. the one that got you so into she this, wasn't, right? She was excited about the opportunity. She was nervous, obviously, right. because... Um, I wasn't that young. I was a junior, but it just was so new to me. So the first couple times she took me and then she handed me a map and was like, you got to get out there and do it on your own. Um, But what ended up being really cool about it was my my brother was is five years younger than me. And my mom was was she was like, well, I have to go to the city on Saturday morning. So you're coming with me. So my brother started fencing with me there at the same time. And now he's also uh, Olympic hopeful, too. What? I tell you, it runs in the family. It definitely does. But how's it go? I mean, you said like this. Olympic team, national team, what are the differences? Like you went to college yeah, great question. Yeah. So when you're in high school, essentially the levels you're aspiring to are to be on the world team according to your age category. Mm. So there's an under-17 national team, there's an under-20 national team, and then there is like Olympic level. Right. Um, so what you do is you go to World Cups of your age category, and then you try to do well, you know, win them or whatever. Right. Uh, and then you are ranked – according to how you do your competitions and top four people go to the world championships in whatever age category that is. So for me, I'm Olympic level. So um, we have 12 World Cups that we go to. Well, we have, sorry, we have eight World Cups and four national competitions. Yeah. Every competition you're trying to do the best of all the Americans so you can be top four at the end of the year. And then, and then at the end of the year, you go to world championships or this year, the Olympics. So where are the world championships held? Uh, last year we were in Budapest. Oh. That was my first national team. 
So we were in Budapest. And my brother, it was his first national team, too. And is this something that's like, I mean, um, like my family's from India. I don't think there's too many Indian fans. Is this there's mostly your, is that right? So is, yeah, this a, yeah. is this a global sport? That's my question. Is this mostly in Europe? Is this mostly, I feel like Eastern Europe, Russia is where it may have originated, or am I totally off there? So um, it started in France. France ah. is a really strong team. But European countries are the best. Right. Uh, not just because of where it started, but just because of resources. Um, France, Italy, Russia, Ukraine, like they, right. they have the best teams. They have the most money. Oh, the U.S., obviously. Mm, of course. Um, and then when you kind of trickle down outside of that area, South America, there are some teams, but it's really hard for them. Um, Asia is really coming up. So China, Korea, and Japan are okay. like real starting to make names for themselves. Africa is... Um, they don't have a, such a strong program, but they have a lot of fencers that are leaving their countries and traveling in Europe. So they're becoming really strong too. And there are a couple Indian fencers oh, hey, making there we a go. name for themselves. Actually, I think. Not just crickets. See, I told you. No, no. We're <laughs> getting there, fencing. Good, good. So it's truly a global sport, and that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So so after um, Peter Westbrook, you went to Temple, right? Uh, yes. On scholarship, so, I'm assuming. Right? Um, what was really cool about my story is you, at the time, um, they weren't allowed to recruit until your, the f July 1st of your senior year. Okay. So for us and as Spencers, that is when we have this huge competition called Summer Nationals, and it's 10 days, all age categories. It's just like a free-for-all. Um, so that was my first competition. And then all my my um, competitors and all yeah. my teammates, they were all sitting down with like Penn State coaches, Columbia coaches, Notre Dame coaches. So you didn't even know where you I'd, stood. No. Well, I, I knew I was at zero. Cause was no, my I'm first just time. saying, but as far yeah. as your future. I didn't even know how it worked. So I didn't even know that that was happening until much later in the game. Mm. But my one of my mentors had a really close relationship with um, the coach at Temple University who um, was a two-time Olympia, uh, two Olympian. She's um, a really important, strong African-American female in the fencing community. So he told me I should speak to her. Mm. I hated the idea because so many people from Teaneck High go to Temple. I just wanted nothing. Oh, so you to want to get them. away from your classmates? Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, I don't want to do this. But It's a fantastic school. It's a great school. I got into the honors program. Yeah. And then she brought me down. She showed me everything. And, you know, athletes, they get everything so she's like you get all this free stuff so you get hooked up huh yeah i was like oh, okay well then i like this place Actually, did you live in center city or you live in north philly or where i lived was... in north philly yeah so, yeah so uh, when i was in temple i st still was part of my club where i went back and forth every couple of weeks just to keep training yeah. but once the season picked up you know i was just fencing in college and you were pre-med or yeah okay. i was That's... a bio major bio major psychology yeah, me too minor. i was bio major and i couldn't i could barely do intramural basketball how did you manage to you know, national champion, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, I think a lot of it, well, actually, I know a lot of it is just, like, hard work and discipline. Right. So my first two weeks of college were very rough for me because, as you know, you go to college, everyone's partying, everyone's yeah. having a great time. And I, I had wanted a, to I had do a good that. freshman year. I'm so he actually, he <laughs> exactly. actually, you were ahead of the, what, your, uh, your, your... The Glee Club. The Glee Club yeah. and That's the, the Dungeons and Dragons, I think, uh, right, club we as well? We had Dungeons and Dragons. Puzzle Club? Puzzle Club. Friday Night Board Game Club? All right, continue, sorry. Yeah, no, that's... See? That's good stuff. This is really part She's of his success. Gonna you you got to yeah. write, <laughs> write that down on your resume. Um, so for Glee me, Club. my first couple of weeks were hard, and my mom was just like, listen, keep trying, keep working hard. It'll all pay off. You'll notice very, very soon. And then second semester, people were failing out of classes. People weren't coming back to school. And mm. I had a really high GPA. So I was like, okay, well, great. This is working out really well for me. So just a lot of hard work, um, a lot of focus. A lot of my friends never pressured me to be hanging out with them. They always understood what I was trying to do. Right. And I think that was really important. And you did biology as a prerequisite for medicine? Or you had yes. known you always wanted oh, to yep. do? Oh, yeah, always wanted to be a doctor since I was maybe three. Did you at one point, like either contemplate giving up one or the other because no it's... so for me um so i skipped first grade and i started school early and the reason i'm saying that is because i was six... just showing off I no 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 <laughs> so i was 16 when i went into college um 16 we went to college yeah i was 16 when i went to college oh, wow so um in math. terms wow. of the like world cups and all that type of stuff uh, i was too old to do i was too old to fence like 
where, with everybody else. Gotcha. Um, so I missed out on like under 17 because I, I just turned 17 at the wrong time. Got it. And then I almost missed out on under 20 in terms of World Cup. So I never had any of that experience. Mm. Um, and then that's kind of what motivated me to keep going and try to make the Olympics because I had never been on a national team. And I said, well, if you've been fencing this long, you might as well get something out of it, you know? Right. So how'd you make it to train for the Olympics? So that's not just like an easy road. Um, like. No, it's not. So my senior year of college, after NCAA, it's pretty much everyone who fences says, listen, either we're going to quit or we're going to keep going. Um, but like I said, I didn't really feel like I had done anything. But I yeah. also knew I was going to med school because I just wanted to be a doctor for so long. So I said, all right, well, let me just try to make the Olympics and fence in med school at the same time and see how that goes. Wow. Which sounds incre- insane. Cause I just, this is coming from Student Athlete of the Year. Yeah, I did. Twice at, at Temple. <laughs> I didn't know what I'd be getting myself into. It's And so other people had done it. So I was like, all right, well, let's just see. Then once I started med school, I realized how nuts I was. But um, once again, just like the discipline, scheduling, hard work, um, it just got me. That's going to carry you on through your whole medical career. Is by it? The way. Yes. That's it exciting is to hear. Because, uh, of course. But you, I the, mean, it's more than just discipline, hard work. You have a whole different level of discipline, hard work that I, I don't think. Some people have people luck. Can't have, like, for instance, my colleague over yeah, here. You know, they but get, people get can't appreciate luck. how, right. you know, intense, not, that, not just biology or getting into medicine or getting to medical school, but, you know, the doing of, something else at such a high elite level. So, I mean, you, I mean, I think. It's a testament to what you've accomplished so far. Our hats off to you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I th- like you said, I mean, I think most us included, you're so focused on becoming a physician, everything you have to do to get there. You know, then you have internship, residency, fellowship sometimes. Then you be a uh, job, and then you got to make your name, and then, you know, do well. And, you know, it, it's, it's very – in fact, a lot of doctors I think that we talk to, they say, well, you know, I can't wait to retire so I can pick up hobbies, which I didn't have any for my whole career. Yeah, I hear that so, too. You're right. So you, it's so, so important to really have something else. And there's a lot of blogs and discussions about doctors burning out and things. But one of the things they talk about is having something else to fall back on to so you can be a both great physician but also have something outside medicine. So but I also you're think lucky during, you have that. That's great. During the process too, right? During so the, not yeah. just like if medicine doesn't work out, but something just to keep you focused and relieve stress and stuff. So we all had – Hobby. I mean, you're on a whole different level, but we all had like hobbies. You and had your puzzles. And I, I exercise a lot, but uh, not to the elite level. No. Yeah, Harry well, Potter, whatever you did. I'm going to Harry Potter Land uh, tomorrow. I'm very excited. As an adult. As an adult. Potter. Yes. I would go too. I oh love Harry. Potter. And you know what? We're going to actually go to. Um, <laughs> we're gonna this go is to where the conversation <laughs> turns. <laughs> but just in case you're wondering, we're going to go to Hollywood Studios and build your own lightsaber. Wow. And I'm thinking now, with everything you just taught me. That I'm going to tear up my son. Well, when we battle against each so other. So on the news, you'll see this doctor arrested for <laughs> lightsabering Mickey Mouse. Well, no, you know, I'm, I'm going to try. If, if you could show me some moves afterwards, I'd really so appreciate it. So lightsaber fencing is in the Olympics now. Come and on. I don't know what on. those rules are. Lightsaber Yeah, you can, you can go in a circle. You can do all types of things. Oops. Yeah. And you can use Jedi mind tricks. The whole I'm not, I don't know. I don't know what the rules are. Just use, the, like, use the force. Use the force. That, that's not a joke, by the way. That, this is I'm light, very you, serious. You're using what? So things that look like lightsabers? That, I haven't read into it. I wow. just know that the, the French we, we may have to have Sports you co- yeah. Olympic Committee decided to put it in the Olympics. We may have to have a follow-up uh, interview and discuss that some more. Are there um, – back to you. As far as <laughs> your pursuit of medicine, is there anyone in your family that's in the medical field? No, or what nobody. was your I mean, What was your motivation one. to do medicine? Um, My – Pediatrician. I mean, I think I'm the only kid who likes going to the pediatrician. Okay. So I went. Um, she was another African American female. I mm-hmm. think that's been very. She had a, a, a great. A lot of role models. Yeah, there's right. been a lot of role models. Sure. Um, I love when she gave me shots. I love like the whole process, like the physical. Yes. I was like, this is like, great. Kamali's so you back were, again. You were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I loved it. You're, um, you're anti-vaxxers and you have the hyper-vaxxers. Right. They right. Want all I, the vaccines. <laughs> <laughs> I think a, a good amount of vaccines is appropriate. Um, and then when I was in high school, I worked for a woman who created the nutritional program for a edu- for a middle school. Mm-hmm. And basically, she did a pre and a pro post test. And when I was grading the pre test, I saw that all these kids like they just didn't know how to eat. They didn't know what they were supposed to be doing. So right. I was like, wow, this like they could use me. I could be a sure. pediatrician that changed lives. Oh, that's 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 fantastic. That's, yeah. that's great. I'm going to ask you a serious question. Yeah. So are you sure you want to do orthopedic surgery? Because nephrology is probably the – that's kidney disease and high blood pressure if people don't know. Um, I, I was going to say infectious disease, but you orthopedic surgery. Is yeah, that? so it took a huge twist when I got into medical school. Yeah. Uh, so my first 
two weeks before med-, med school, I was fencing and I jammed guards with this guy and I broke my thumb. And um, I, I didn't want to be an orthopedic surgeon at that time. But I did go to a sports medicine doctor and he was terrible. Right. Uh-oh. Um, right. Because I was about to start like my Olympic cycle, this 2012, and I was like, well, what can I do? How can I get back faster? And this guy was just not on the same page as me. So I was like, you know what? Maybe another athlete needs to help other athletes. Sure. And that's how I should get involved. So I was very primary care sports medicine for two years. But I love PEDS, so I was like, well, do I want to do PEDS right. or family medicine? Like, what do, where do I want to go? Um, so when I did my third year of med school, I put peds and family medicine last so I could have everything else first, right. get really smart, get really, right, and be ready to go. at the right. end. Just so having that surgery was second. I was shaking in my boots because I was like, you know, yeah. you know the reputation with surgeons. You know, they're like super difficult to work with and they're like it's really intense, intense and intense, all that. Right. But my first day, I was like, this is great. I love these people. I feel like that this is you. me. Yeah, yeah, this is my personality. Well, you're intense and you're strong, you know, so I mean, yeah. you got it back and down. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. That's what my mom said. So mm. after maybe two weeks, I call my mom every day, and I'm like, you'll never guess what I saw today. You'll never guess what I saw right. today. And she was like, well, I think you need to do surgery. And I was like, no, I can't just be surgery, you know, because everyone, like, by third year, you know what you want and you know right. what you don't. So uh, at my school, they gave you the option to do electives. Right. Um, and ortho just seemed like it made sense because I want to do primary care sports medicine. But everyone in this class wanted ortho, and everyone was, like, asking me for my elective. So I was right. like, no, like, it's mine. I just back up, you know? So by the <laughs> time I got to my elective, I was like, well, let's see what all this excitement is about. Right. And uh, the first surgery I did was osteotomy, and the attending asked me if I wanted to put the screw in. Mm. And I was like, this is nuts. And after I put in one screw, I was like, this is the best you thing I've hooked. ever done in my You're life. You were hooked, so to speak, yeah. Wow. It's like yeah. the best thing, though. It was amazing. Wow. And I was like, all right, Pete, sorry. <laughs> You're gone. So you're saying nephrology, infectious disease, they don't have a chance, perhaps? I, no. Oh, no. And <laughs> or, ortho training is such a long time, though. I mean, compared to how long is infectious disease? It's uh, three. It's five years. Yeah. Okay. Well, so is ortho. Well, I, think she's, do, I think she's proven. Ortho, I think she's clearly proven she's not. She's up for the challenge. For anything oh, yeah. I mean, it's and then one next this is five nothing. Years, it's a walking apart years. for her. That's all the same. Uh, back to fencing. I have a question. What's the lifespan of a fencer? Like... You know, um, so how many Olympics can mm-hmm. you, you mentioned one of your mentors had, was a six time yeah. uh, Olympic uh, so that's winner. Twenty four years, right? Of, of elite. No, yeah. no I'm probably... well, he's an anomaly. He's insane, mm. this man. I don't understand. So what's an old fencer then? Um, so two answers to that question. The first answer is my weapon, women's saber. Actually, women weren't allowed to fence saber until 1999. Hmm. So the first time I was in the Olympics was 2004. Um, and there are several people who were in that first Olympics who are still fencing now. Okay. So essentially, those women are setting the precedent on how long we keep fencing because several of them have had children, sure. multiple children, and they're just, they're back. So essentially, they're it's to be determined. Maybe they're, they're right. still going, which is So amazing. that's for women's yeah. saber. But in general, I would say women stop fencing before for men, I would assume probably because of like family reasons. Right. But uh, usually like 34, 35 is like on okay. the quote unquote old side for men like 42 ish. But that's still a long it is. outlook. It's I mean, a long time. Yeah, it also a long depends time frame. where you live. So in America, as you know, Olympic sports, it's hard for you to build a career off that unless you're really, really, really amazing. Whereas in other countries like Italy, the top there's more support. Four top eight, yeah, they're government sponsored. Oh, They've got money for days. So so they don't have to have a day job, so to no, speak. No, right? no, no, no. In in uh, Russia, for example, every time you win world championships, you get a million dollars. Every time you win the Olympics, you get like two million dollars, nice. right. plus like apartments and cars and all that stuff. So, yeah, they don't have day jobs. And but, all the advertising and promotion. Mm-hmm. But, it, but it's cold there, so we're glad you're exactly. here. Exactly. <laughs> it is cold. And the sun, the sun is, is very odd. That's right. But I, I have a sneaky suspicion that you're not going to just get, you know, win one goal. You're going to want to keep doing it multiple Olympics. So how do you envision that with probably orthopedic residency and probably practice? That's a great question. Um, I'm trying to figure it out, but I know for a fact after this Olympics, I'm going to put my saber down for a while Okay. because residency is just too much. Mm-hmm. And also it's just, you just need to focus. You need right. to learn how to become a surgeon and all that. I don't think I'm going to be done fencing forever. I just, right now, just residency and then we'll... we'll so go. after the Olympics, maybe the competitive training will take a backseat yeah, for some time. Yeah, definitely. And it sounds like the uh, the dexterity you have with fencing probably naturally translates into orthopedic surgery. Yeah, well, that's what people keep telling me. I'm a, I'm very good at closing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. Retracting. I was a king yeah. retractor. Were you? Yeah. 
It doesn't take much skill for that. It does. <laughs> that's, so why there's I a yell reason that they, all the time. There's a reason they call it scut monkey. Scut monkey. Right. Yeah. yeah. I can Remember hold the term? leg like it's nobody's business, <laughs> man. Yeah. Until you get yelled at. I was very good at putting in foolies. Um, I you think. Still are. Yeah. <laughs> What would you do if you couldn't be a doctor, though? If you, or, you know, if some reason they said, "Hey, you know, med school's closed." Like, what would you do otherwise? What are your other interests? I know you have so many. Mm, I like working with athletes. Um, maybe something like PR. Maybe something like being a manager. Yeah. Something along those lines. Yeah, I think it's pretty exciting. I think they get a lot of perks too. So. Sure. I mean, you got to take the good and the bad with jobs, but like you see what the the good stuff is, and yeah. So clearly, the the, the thing here is something with sports mm -hmm. right, related. We want to wrap it up with some some rapid fire. Rapid questions. fire. So I started with the uh, what, what would you do if you want to be a doctor? But you got some more questions or what? Yeah. yeah. Um, do you watch medical shows? I do. What's, what's your favorite medical? I'm not one? like up to date with like the resident and all that stuff, um, but I like Scrubs the best. Oh, see, oh, yeah. that's our favorite. Do you know favorite. that is based loosely Turk was loosely based on his life. I'm no, making I'm making it. I'm making that up obviously, oh. but uh, I was JT. Was it JT? Who was yeah. that? Yeah. Yes. So I'm like the brown version of JT, and then you're you're you know, brown and balding. I can't see that. When I was younger, I looked, I looked. I had beautiful hair like JT. Um, have you ever been poked in the eye? What, With what, a saber? Yes. No, 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 no. No. So what, you have a mask on. Ah, uh, yeah. The mask. My brother. But do you ever? Do you ever like say you know you got to scratch your nose? You just lift it up and then oh you got poked in the eye. No, I mean, um, so you have a you have a bib, and what that is is like the bottom of the mask that covers your neck. Every oh, once oh. in a while, something can like sneak, sneak up there, but you have that, a right? jacket on. So. I see. Mm -hmm. And then, are you wearing eye? I mean, I just, I just don't know. I mean, yeah. are you wearing any eye protection underneath the no, mask? No, you don't no? need it. You don't need it. Yeah, that mask is, is heavy. It's like um. Is it a mesh so you can see through it? Obviously, it's a mesh so you can see it's through like it. Like a hockey mask, it looks like. Kind, kind of, but there's, just, there's more mesh, so nothing can get through there. Any other interests besides? Do you still do dancing too? I do want to do that again. I think when I'm uh, older, I'd love to do like ballroom dancing, like Dancing with the Stars type of thing. Oh. Yeah. I do really like dancing. So that'd be like your fourth career after everything else. Yeah, and we'll maybe. see you on there, yeah? <laughs> that'd be cool. Last question. If you can come up with one cure for a disease, what disease would it be? Oh my goodness. No pressure. No um, pressure. First thing that pops in your mind. Sickle cell. Okay. That's a good one. That's yeah. very good. We actually talked about the other day about how it gave a evolutionary, uh, you know, tr protective trait uh, right. through West Africa and mm -hmm. actually for malaria. You have to listen to our last episode, but we talked about it a lot, yeah, in terms of malaria and how that actually affected uh, the global slave trade, you know, transatlantic slave trade, things like that. Oh, I want to hear this. That sounds very good. Well, 30 seconds, you know. You please rate and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> recommend and He gets dose. upset when I talk to academic, but they, believe it or not, they viewed that when the um, Europeans came to the New World, a lot of the natives were wiped out by diseases that they brought over, including malaria. And then they realized that uh, malaria, which first showed up in the, and, and the sickle cell actually first showed up in Western Africa about 8,000 years ago in the Niger Delta. And they mm -hmm. realized that people from that area have a natural immunity against malaria. Right. Because the sickle, as mm -hmm. you know, uh, that sickle cell, that red blood cell, is resistant to infection by uh, the protozoa. So this is why she's not going into infectious disease. No, I, this she is cool. sees a lot of interest. Yeah, Thank this you. Is cool. Don't roll your eyes at me. So there's actually an evolutionary uh, advantage to that. But having said that, we, as physicians, right. both Coleman and I have seen the uh, ravages of of sickle cell disease, sickle cell trait. We're talking about but disease is devastating. So yeah. Why any reason in particular that you find it? No, I've met a couple patients. I've never met anyone who was like greatly, greatly affected, or right. I'd never met them at the time when they were, but I've just heard stories and. It's such a, it's a devastating disease. When yeah. you see the crisis and there's so many people are so young. young people, people are so young, yeah. yeah. And actually longevity has been expanded, but you're still talking, you know, 40s in general as an average really lifespan, yeah. which is, it's, it's, really it's tough, yeah. Now you have a blog, Saber and a Stethoscope, which yes. is an awesome. That is you should trademark that. I am that I'm working on it. Okay, good. But where can people find you? You have a website? Yes, or? it's www.kamalithompson.com for simplicity. Um, yeah. You can also find me on Twitter, Kamali underscore Thompson, or Instagram, doctor.molly.malls, or you can just type in Kamali Thompson. And Excellent. We'll and put what, that in the show notes. And what do you like to blog about? And just in so my blog is Education, Fitness, and Travel. Um, Travel aspects usually just pictures because we're always going to World Cups and some random yeah. places. But um, education, like how to study more efficiently, um, tips for people in medical school. So my biggest hit's been what I wish I knew before medical school. Um, yeah. And then fitness, so like types of things to like how to work out, how to eat correctly, things like that. 
Well, thank you so much for coming today. This has been Thanks fantastic. For having me. This is you great. are a very dynamic. Can you teach me some moves? Guest. I want to. Yeah, sure, we can do it. Oh, we look forward. We look forward yeah, to right. it. In the meantime, uh, please be sure to rate and subscribe, or subscribe and rate, whatever your preference is, and find us at holynameorg backslash Daily Dose. Until next time, we're going to sign off from Holy Name Medical Center. I'm your co-host, Dr. Serge Sugger. And Dr. Clinton Coleman. Until next time, be well. Check out recent episodes and learn more about these two modern medicine men and their podcast at holynameorg slash recommended daily dose.